What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. In today's video, we're talking about linear equations and two variables. So I'm going to break down and show you guys what exactly this topic is, and we're going to look at the two most common situations when we're going to be dealing with this concept. So let's get started for today. When we're talking about linear equations and two variables, guys, we're going to be dealing with graphing for the first situation. So we're basically graphing lines from equations. And you're going to see this formula, a of x plus b of y is equal to c. And they gave us the equation and they want us to graph. So our equation is 10x plus 8y is equal to negative 40. So just remember that x and y are our variables. a and b are just going to be coefficients in front of the variable. And then c is the constant. That is what the equation is equal to. So when we're using or we're dealing with this topic, it's going to be dealing with graphing lines, like I said. And the best or most common method is for us to graph by intercepts. So what does that mean? That means we're going to make one of the variables zero and we're going to solve for the other. And this is what I mean. So if we wanted to find out where on the x axis this line touches, we would make y zero. So I'd have 10 times x plus 8 times zero is equal to negative 40. Right? Because this is zero, we, we don't need to write that. It's not going to change the value. So I simplify and have 10x is equal to negative 40. And then now when I divide by 10, x is equal to negative 4. But before we actually plot this point, there's something that we have to understand. This answer is part of a ordered pair, right? So we know ordered pairs are going to have an x and a y value. So we know our x value is negative 4. And the y value, remember, we substituted 0 so we could solve for x. So this is going to be our x-intercept, negative 4, 0, which will be right here. So here goes our first point. Now we go back and we have to find out the y-intercept. Where does this line touch that y-axis? So we do the same thing, but we reverse it now. So now x is going to become 0. I substitute 0 for x and rewrite the rest of the equation. Now we have 8y is equal to negative 40. And when I divide both sides of this equation by 8, y is equal to negative 5. Okay? But remember, this is an ordered pair. So we know that our x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is negative 5. So now we have a second point in which we could plot the y-intercept. So here we go right here. So now at this step, guys, we could draw a line through both those points, and we've now graphed a line for this equation. So this is one way we're going to use linear equations in two variables. But before we go to the second method, Let's also talk about something else that you're going to see with this topic. So let's erase. So when we're dealing with this topic, right, we also have the slope-intercept formula. So basically, we could graph the line in slope-intercept form by solving for y. And I'm going to show you guys that because this is a common skill that you're always, always, always going to see when we're dealing with this topic. So if I wanted to solve for y and get into slope-intercept form, right, we will subtract 10x from both sides, right? So 10x is gone. We do the same thing on the other side. 8y is equal to, and I'm going to keep it in the same form format, meaning my x is going to come first negative 10x minus 40. Now, y is not by itself, so we have to divide everything by 8. And now what we get is y is equal to negative 10 over 8x minus 5. And this is important. Let's just reduce this fraction real quick. All 
All right, so when we look at this equation, guys, this is important because one, this negative sign lets us know we have a negative slope. And when we look at this line, it's, it, it's oriented like we're going down some stairs. So we're correct. When we look at the y-intercept, it's negative five. One, two, three, four, five. So if we wanted to use this format, we could have also graphed and used the slope to get to the next point. So once I graph this point, I can use my slope, five or four, to get to the next point. And if I did, I'll go up one, two, three, four, five, and then over one, two, three, four. And we have the same exact line. So these are two methods we can use when we are graphing linear equations in two variables. And with that, we're going to go on to the second most common type of math problems you'll see when we're dealing with this topic. In the second part of this video, guys, we're now going to be dealing with word problems and linear equations with two variables. So anytime we have a word problem, the first thing we want to do is to write out x is equal to and y is equal to. Because we know we're going to define some type of variable. And I hope you guys stick around for this problem because there's so much information and game I'm going to throw at you. Really hope this is helpful. So it says a man is selling veg uh, a man selling vegetables sells pumpkins for five dollars each and tomatoes for three dollars each. So first off, right, what are we talking about? I know we're talking about pumpkins and we're talking about tomatoes because remember we have two variables, so we're probably talking about two different things, right? Exactly. Second, anytime you see the word each, that should let you know that. We don't know the number, and that's what a variable stands for, an unknown number. We don't know the amount of tomatoes or the amount of pumpkin sold. So let's highlight that. Then we continue the total sales. So when we create this equation, we're probably going to add the total sales on a certain day was $98. Okay. If they sold 10 pumpkins, write and solve a linear equation to find out the number of tomatoes sold. So even though it seems elementary, guys, always highlight the most important information because one, it makes it easier and it's going to be more organized for you. And two, they will throw out extra numbers and variables. And when I say variables, I just mean they're going to throw out tricks to make you think that, hey, I need to be concerned about this when you don't. All right. So let's think about this. Right. We're going to make X. Let's make X our pumpkins. OK. So X stands for the number of pumpkins. So this is a put pumpkin number, right? So the number of pumpkins, Y is going to stand for the number of tomatoes because we do not know, right? So now we create the equation. I know how much do I sell each pumpkin for? It tells me $5. So every pumpkin costs $5. We don't know the amount, which we represent with X. I mean, if we're trying to find the total sales, that lets us know we have to add, right? Imagine if you went to the grocery store and you bought two items. You'd have to add to know your total. Exactly. So now we know we add what? $3 for every pumpkin. We don't know what the pumpkin is, but Y represents the number of pumpkins. And this is equal to the $98 that we spent. Now, luckily for us, this is a substitution problem. They told us the amount of pumpkins they sold, which are 10. So when we go to solve this, let's switch back to black now. We're going to substitute. So now I'm going to substitute after creating my equation. We have 5 times 10 plus 3y is equal to 98. So we have 50 plus 3y is equal to 98. When I subtract 50, I'm left with... 3y is equal to 48. And let me just double check because I, I want to say the answer is 16, but let's just double check. It is 16. Why? Well, once we divide by 3, I'm going to get y is equal to 16. So what does the 16 represent? They're saying that if we buy 10 pumpkins and 16 tomatoes, that is going to be the basically the combination or the solution, right? So that's how much we bought of each. 
and that's going to equal to the $98. So let's, let's, let's bring that back. What am I saying? I'm saying that this is our solution when X is 10 and Y is 16. This is our solution. That's the ordered pair. So now when we go back, right, let's say we need to double check. We would just plug that ordered pair in. So 5 times 10 plus 3 times 16 is equal to 98. This is how you check if it's the correct answer. If the right side or if both sides of the equations are equal, we know that that is a correct or that is a solution to the equation. So when we add these two, we're going to get 98 is equal to 98. So we know that that is a solution. But before we go, I want to touch on something that I didn't tell you guys in the first example. But I was trying to make you guys stay to the end of the video. If you made it this far, this is going to be helpful for you guys. So let's just draw a line. Right? Let's say we're talking about the first problem that we did in this video. What I need you to know is the X and Y intercepts are solutions, right? I know this line looks different, but just let's say it's the same exact line. Any point on this line, all these points that I'm making are also solutions, okay? All of these points are solutions. So that's a very important concept to understand, and they're going to quiz you. So any dot, any ordered pair, any X and Y that falls in this line is a solution. Anything that is not on the line, like these blue dots, would not be a solution to the linear equation. Hopefully, we hope this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us with Algebra with Mr. Peters. Smash the like button for us. Subscribe to the channel and leave comments down for future videos you guys would like to see. Or if you had a question on today's video, thank you guys for joining.